Hello BookTube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and it's time to wrap up the month of March. I'm gonna do a separate video about um, the hosts and the wonderful awesome March Mystery Madness hosts and kind of wrap up and summarize the videos that they did during the month of March because I want to make sure that you see those. But uh, this video is going to be about what I read in the month of March. I finished 24 books. Uh, five of them were middle grade books and one of those in particular was definitely a mystery. The others had some mystery elements, uh, but then the other 19 were adult mysteries, and uh, they were a variety. Uh, I read a couple of ones that would be, you know, psychological, suspense, thriller types, um, some detective fiction, and some cozy mysteries. So um, I did a video on Friday, March 30th, and I said that I was still trying to finish six books. I did finish five of those. One of them I had barely started, and so I didn't get to it. I'm reading it now. Uh, so I will try to give you another sentence or two about those last five books. Uh, but right now I have kind of grouped them into categories. So let me start with the middle grade books that I read that would count for middle grade March. I didn't specifically do the challenges. I don't even have the challenges written down. Um, it's possible that some of these would have uh, met the challenges because I know for sure that uh, The Girl Who Drank the Moon was their group read and it's an award winner. So I know that met one of the challenges. I mainly read this because it's one of our Sunshine State books for this year and because it's a Newbery winner. I I had had it on my TBR for a while. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Uh, then all of these but one are Sunshine State books. I had to finish reading them at the beginning of the month for uh, Book Bowl at our middle school, and I got all that I needed to read read but one so i'm reading it this month but these are the ones i read so uh this is the one that is an actual mystery i definitely want to read more of this it's by james ponty called framed uh it is a toast mystery toast stands for um theory of all small things and uh it reminded me a lot of Sean from Psych. When I first talked about this book, I said Gus from Psych, and I didn't mean to do that. I watched Psych enough to know Gus from Sean. Uh, but anyway, the kid in this story is very observant, and uh, it, it was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, then I read The Nerdy Dozen by Jeff Miller, and I reread The Nest by Kenneth Opal. And all of these Sunshine State books I'll be talking about more when I do my Sunshine State wrap-up. And I have already talked about them earlier in the month. Then the other middle grade book I read because I thought it was going to be a mystery based on the title, Harriet the Spy. Uh, but I needed to read a book that was uh, published or written the year I was born for the Library Challenge. And so this was published in 1964. So it filled the bill for that challenge. Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzhugh. It was cute. It was just about her spying on people. It wasn't really a mystery as such, but it was cute. Um, definitely indicative of the times, uh, the 60s. I don't think you would find this, uh, this uh, today I think would be considered very politically incorrect. Uh, a lot of the stuff that she does and the, and that the way it's written, but um, but still, it's a classic. It's cute, and uh, and I I had fun reading it. Okay, um, now the ones that I read that were more gritty, let's say, let's call them that. Uh, this met the challenge for a new book, uh, even though it's been on my TBR for a long time. I picked this copy up brand new at Dollar General just before March. It is uh, Defending Jacob by William Landy. It was a book club book at my local library book club several years ago, and I never got it read, and I always wanted to. I'm glad I did. Uh, I talked about it earlier in the month. It... I didn't love it, but it was okay. And the same with this, uh, In the Woods by Tana French. I didn't love it. It was okay. It was it was compelling. I was curious about how it was going to play out, but I don't think I liked it well enough to continue with the series. So I doubt I'll read any more of this. Uh, and the frustrating thing was that you never knew when the F word was going to fly. And I was trying to listen to it in the car. You know, a lot of times Emily's with me in the car and I went ahead and played it. And, you know, she has autism, and, and I don't know how much she hears or comprehends or even pays attention. I still don't like playing this kind of thing with her in the car um, because I don't know what she's absorbing and what she's not absorbing. And uh, and I don't like her hearing this kind of stuff. But I didn't have any other choice if I was going to get it read. So I went ahead and did. Uh, I may regret it later, but, uh, but anyway, I... 
I don't think I'm going to continue with the series. This one I definitely couldn't and didn't listen to uh, with the kids in the car. Uh, a little bit with Emily in the car, but again, I didn't like to. Uh, it's way too explicit and too gritty. Um, and for that reason, I don't think I'll continue with this series. It, it's very compelling. I figured out the mystery about halfway through, I think. Um, and, uh, and that was kind of fun. But I know a lot of people love this series. I just don't think it's for me. I'm not this I just don't like things that are quite this explicit I know that it happens um, Mar from uh, books like whoa was talking about the ethics of reading mysteries you know and, and talking about how we read these really gritty things for the enjoyment you know about people dying and and what's the ethics of that uh, it was an interesting discussion and, and I'll mention her video more when I talk about the host videos um, and, and that's true it's kind of a it's something to think about, but uh, this I don't think is for me, but I can see why people enjoy the series. Uh, very strong female lead, and um, anyway, now I know what it's about. It met one of the library challenges, and so, you know, it accomplished its purpose. All right, a couple of historical books that I read. Uh, the one I counted for the historical prompt was A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And I went ahead also and listened to, oh, not that one. <laughs> uh, well, I did, but um, a sign, The Sign of Four. Uh, these are the first two Sherlock Holmes stories. And I liked this one a lot more than this one. I didn't really understand this one completely. It was hard to follow, but uh, I might go back and revisit it or maybe just watch an adaptation. Did they do this story on Sherlock, the Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock? I don't know. I know that this one was one of them. It's the only one I've watched, uh, and I haven't watched it recently. I want to go back and watch the whole series, um, but maybe if I see it come to life, that will help. Uh, that'll help me understand it a little bit better. Then, because Louise, the big-haired bookworm, was reading this for her very casual Agatha Christie book club, I picked this up in early March, The Mysterious Affair at Styles, a Hercule Poirot mystery. I have read a few Hercule Poirot, and this is the first one, so I thought I would pick it up. And honestly, now, I can't even remember <laughs> anything about it. Uh, but I remember enjoying it. I think I've enjoyed others better or more, but, um, but anyway, it was fun to read. Okay, then these next few are going to be detective fiction, whether police detective or private detective, but some, some type of law enforcement or professional detective. Uh, I read uh, Fire and Ice by J.A. Jantz, and uh, I've already talked about this one. I enjoyed that. Then I read, I'm trying to see which ones I still need to talk about. Um, that one. I read Mr. Monk Goes to the Firehouse by Lee Goldberg. Mr. Monk is the obsessive compulsive detective. And then early in the month, I read Still Life by Louise Penny. And I did just recently watch this movie adaptation. It's on Hoopla. Uh, I think it's called Three Pines Mystery or something like that. Uh, or maybe it's just called Three Pines. And I enjoyed it. I think I liked the movie adaptation a little bit better than the book. And then um, the other two in this category, I just finished on the last day of the month. I finished The Double Comfort Safari Club by Alexander McCall Smith. Now, this would probably be probably be considered a cozy mystery, but Precious Ramotswe is a professional detective, so I'm including it in this category. And uh, these are just full of common sense and wisdom, so charming, and I love that series. Uh, then this is a Danny Ross mystery, or a Danielle Ross mystery by Gilbert Morris. Uh, the second one is And Then There Were Two. I have to look some more into this series because there's two editions of this series and I thought that the second book in the original series was also the second book in this series. I just found out it's not because when I was listening to this on audio I went and looked at my other copy and it's not the same story at all. So I checked this out from the library. This is the actual book that I listened to and uh, in this book she is protecting a businessman who feels his life is in danger and someone's trying to kill him and so her and her assistant Ben Savage are protecting um, they've been hired to protect him and uh, then it goes on from there this is a Christian based story this whole series uh, Gilbert Morris uh, I believe wrote all historical most 
I didn't say that right. He wrote a lot of historical fiction and uh, and some modern day, but all of it I think was basically a Christian theme. And um, this I have to say, as far as the Christian aspect goes, now I'm a Christian. Uh, Danny Ross, our main character, um, she is definitely very outspoken about her beliefs. Sometimes she brings up uh, God and, and shares with people about Jesus at times that I think were a little awkward. That's just me. Uh, you know, there's not a right or wrong time, I suppose, uh, you know. As a Christian, if you feel like God is leading you to talk to somebody, then you should do what God says, you know, not what another human says. But um, it felt a little forced, a little awkward, and I didn't think it was very realistic, some of the situations. But uh, I'm never going to fault somebody for sharing what they believe. Um, you know, they certainly have every right to do that. And, uh, and I share her beliefs, uh, just don't know that I would bring it up in some of the situations that she was in. I don't know. That's just me. So, uh, I'm definitely going to read more of the series. I enjoyed it. And then the next ones I think would all be considered cozy mysteries. Uh, I think I've already talked about this one, uh, The Cat Who Went Up the Creek by Lillian Jackson Braun. Um, actually, I think I finished this on the last day as well. I listened to this on CD and I listened to it in my kitchen. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. This had a lot to do with squirrels. <laughs> there were a lot of squirrels in this one. Um, and this one, like the last few, seemed to have more to do with the characters in the town than the actual mystery. And there was actually a couple of murders in this one. Uh, but they were not the central focus, I didn't think, of the story. And I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I like this community, and I like the the banter between the characters. I enjoy the cats. So um, so that was totally fine. But if you're looking for just a straight-out murder mystery, then the last few of this series, at least that I've read, I think this is number 23, um, have just been more focused on the story and not necessarily the actual mystery. Then um, I read another Christian-based book, and again, this is not a murder mystery. Uh, this is a historical mystery um, about a quilt restorer. I've already talked about it, and this series, this one uh, is the third book in the Patchwork Mystery Series uh, published by Guidepost. This is Muslin Mystery by Vera Dodge, and I love this series. It's great. It's about a quilt restorer. She finds clues and quilts she's restoring. She does a lot of research in historical societies and libraries and archives and it's just right up my alley. I love this kind of stuff. Then I uh, have several other cozy mysteries. Um, I don't think any of those last ones I mentioned were for challenges. Actually, yes, I didn't mention. This was for the borrowed challenge because I borrowed both the CDs and the print book from the library. All right, so I said I was going to read three books for, or I'm sorry, four books for the opposite challenge. I had two pairs of books to read for opposite, uh, and in within each pair, I was going to do one on audio and one in print. I only completed one pair I uh, and half of the other pair. So the pair I completed were the Coffee and Tea Mysteries. I read in print Gunpowder Green by Laura Childs. This is book two in the Tea Shop Mysteries. And on audio, I listened to Through the Grinder, a Coffee House Mystery by Cleo Coyle. And I've already talked about these earlier in the month. Then I said I was going to read a crochet and a knitting mystery, and I listened to Hooked on Murder by Betty Hechtman. This was a lot of fun. I talked about it earlier in the month, and I said I was going to uh, read in print Skein of the Crime by Maggie Sefton, and I didn't uh, get it done. I barely got it started, and even now I am only on page 56, <laughs> so uh, I've still got quite a bit of it to read. I've just had a hard time focusing on print reading lately, but I have already listened to at least yeah two um, two full audiobooks in the month of April, but I'm just having a hard time focusing on print books. I don't know why. Okay, then uh, two more. Uh, another 
fiber or yarn <laughs> themed mystery, Last Wool and Testament, a haunted yarn shop mystery by Molly McRae. This was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I don't usually read paranormal stuff, but this was really good. I enjoyed it. Can't wait to read more. And then I read uh, for our library challenge, I had to read a book by a celebrity. So one of you told me about these Eileen Davidson cozy mysteries, soap opera mysteries. This one was called Death in Daytime, and I really enjoyed it. It's a little bit sassier than some cozy mysteries, a little more language and and stuff going on, but um, it was very much like a soap opera, <laughs> the story, so uh, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I'm definitely going to read more in that series. So I think that's it, except for the one ebook that I read, and I have it pulled up here. I read another a Christian-themed book, a cozy mystery called Starboard Secrets by Hope Callahan. This is the first book in the cruise ship cozy mystery series. And you can see here that uh, our main character, see her white hair. She is a 60 something year old woman who has just taken a job on a cruise ship as an assistant cruise director. And uh, she, she has, you know, her kids are grown, her husband has left her, and she just on a whim decides to take this job. She is a Christian. Uh, the Christian part of this is very low-key. There's just times when she gets herself in situations and she says a little prayer, and that's about as far as that goes. Um, I thought it was great. It's very clean. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I found that several of these books uh, were uh, on sale, and so I've already bought several more from about three different series by Hope Callahan. Can't wait to read more. It was super fun, and I think that's all 24 books that I read in the month of March. So the stats, um, 18 of them were audio, uh, five were in print, and then that does not include the one on my Kindle, the ebook. Um, 19 of them were adult books and five of them were middle grade books. So that is it for March Mystery Madness uh, for what I read. And I have started watching some of your wrap up videos. I have not gotten to nearly all of them, but give me time. I plan to get around to watching everything related to March Mystery Madness. I'm so excited about meeting so many people that I didn't know before. That's really been the best part of March Mystery Madness is uh, meeting new people, subscribing to new channels, and uh, just having a lot of fun uh, doing it. Thank you again so much to all of the hosts. Thank you to the participants. And um, I hope to see you all back next year for year four of March Mystery Madness. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you are having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.